Welcome to another episode of our show, Apostolic Church. We all need to learn what are the characteristics of an apostolic church. Not just the Coptic church, but the apostolic church. We learn that we believe in one holy, Catholic or universal apostolic church. Today we would like to learn what were one of the characteristics of the first church are the liturgies, the Eucharist. And I want to go through the book of Acts. Where are the liturgies in the book of Acts? And one of the early signs that our Lord used the word in the first of the week, the eighth day, which meant Sunday. For example, now on the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, and we read that in Act 20, and that's the story when St. Paul made a liturgy, and while he was giving a sermon, a man, his name is Eutychus, fell from the top floor and he was dead. And then St. Paul prayed on him, then continued breaking the bread, and after communion, the man resurrected. Couple of things. One, liturgy. St. Paul was breaking bread. Second, in the first day of the week. Third, the correlation between the Eucharist, communion, resurrection, conquering of death. And even back in John 20, right after the resurrection of our Lord, we read now the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb early while it was still dark and saw that the stone had been taken away. And also in John 20, the same day at the evening being the first day of the week, and even on the same chapter, three times in the same chapter, and after eight days, which is a Sunday after the Sunday of resurrection, because if you count the Sunday till Sunday will be eight days. And usually the word the eighth day represented the second life or the afterlife or the paradise life. And that's why Eucharist, liturgy, communion was correlated with the first day of the week, which is Sunday, or the acronym or the abbreviation or the, or the prototype of using um, the eighth day. And after eight days, the disciples were again inside and Thomas with them. Jesus came, the doors being shut, and he stood in the midst and he said, peace to you. In Luke 24, which is the chapter of also the resurrection, we read on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, and that's again the resurrection. And the same goes for Mark 16, on the first day of the week. So, it's very clear that the Bible speaks, and especially in the book of Acts, that the first day of the week or the eighth day connects with the day of the Lord, Sunday, or the day of the Lord, the day of Eucharist, or the day of the Lord, the day of liturgy. And in Acts 20, the main word that we always read in the book of Acts, when the disciples came together to break bread. And breaking the bread wasn't just a simple act of breaking the bread, but rather an order, an order of communion. And the liturgy here was equivalent to two things, meeting of the people and the unity, the perfection of the body the oneness in body. Because when the disciples came together to break bread 
And that's what is liturgy all about. Liturgy is having community of people, having communion with Christ. And that's why in our Eucharist, in our liturgy, we pray for many things and many people who are not exactly be with us in liturgy, but because of the unity, we pray for the departed, the sick, the travelers, and those who offered offerings, which tells us that the, in the concept of our church, in the mind of the Lord, liturgy in the apostolic church is really praying that everyone, regardless if he is at home sick or is in the road traveling, is still connects with the community of people having communion with Christ. And this is maybe why our apostolic church have insisted on something very essential in early in, its, in her life. You may not know, but the church in the past used not to purchase the wheat for the bread or the wine for the blood, but rather each family brings some wheat and they mix all the wheat together they grind all the wheat grains so no one appears separate. And families bring their grapes or their wine, mix them together, make sure all the grapes are grinded. No one is distinct because at the end there is complete melting of each one to become in unity with each other and in unity with Christ's body. And that's why the idea of breaking the bread that we hear. Breaking the bread meaning distributing God's body, Christ's body. And although a bone was not broken, however, his body as the sacrament of love is distributed to every one of those who eat from. And in Luke 24, when the disciples of Emmaus, their eyes were opened. It were open at a distinct place. And the Bible reads, And as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed, broke it, gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And also in Luke 24, they told about the things that happened and how he was known to them in the breaking of the bread. So in the miracle or in the liturgy of the disciples of Emmaus in Luke 24, the two were walking, fleeing to their countryside, and Jesus followed them or walked with them, and they didn't know them, know, know him. And their minds and hearts were burning in them, and he kept telling them about how the prophets is speaking about him. But again, their eyes were concealed until he literally broke the bread and then their eyes were opened. And that's how our church always in the book of Acts and Apostolic Church sees the liturgy as a time of eye opening. We open our eyes to see Christ being broken for us as was broken for our love and our salvation on the cross, we take him in, in communion and for us to be united with each other and with him. St. Paul wrote about the breaking of the bread when he wrote, in 1 Corinthians 10, the cup of blessings which we bless, is it not communion of the blood of Christ? And the bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? Again, this is the, the amazing word that keeps repeating itself in the book of Acts and many of the liturgies that occurred amongst the disciples and their congregations. And in Acts 20, as I said earlier, 
when St. Paul did the liturgy, when Eutychus fell, we read on the first day of the week when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul, ready to depart the next day, spoke to them and continued his message until midnight. So in the book of Acts, it's very clear the apostolic church has a liturgy. And this liturgy has liturgy of the word. Liturgy, which we call the, where we read the St. Paul letter, the Catholic letters, the Acts, and so on. And basically, those are the food that we eat and we um, comprehend and before we become united with our Lord Jesus Christ in the sacrifice of body and blood. And that's why in our apostolic church, in the history of the martyrs, they used to have communion before they are ready to go and be martyred. And many of the stories, when there was mass martyrdom, the church, all of it together, will have communion, then they walk in a procession of joy to the place of martyrdom. Another area that we read in Acts 20 about the apostolic church and the practice of liturgy, that there were many lamps in the upper room where they were gathered together. And the upper room is the place of the church. That's when our Lord established on Holy Thursday the sacrament of Eucharist. And we read that they gathered together in the upper room and there were many lamps. And even in Micah, in the Old Testament, come and let us go up, not quite to the upper room, but to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of God. He will teach us his ways and we shall walk in his path. And the idea of many lamps in the church is clearly depicted in our apostolic church. Candles, lights, icons, a lot of symbolism with what happened exactly on the upper room. Um, and then again coming back to Eutychus and the liturgy of Acts 20, when St. Paul spoke long and the guy Eutychus fell from the upper floor, we hear that he was taken up dead. But by the end of the liturgy, when he broke the bread, he was alive. And really, that's the amazing idea, not literal death, but awakening in apostolic church understanding of liturgy, awakening from the slumber of in sin. Because sin and death are very close to each other in our biblical understanding. And the liturgy is an awakening in apostolic church understanding. So Paul went down, fell on him, embracing him. Do not trouble yourselves for his life is in him. Acts 20.10 And really... That's what we always find, that the priest during liturgy will do the incense, will do the rounds, will do the procession, almost as if like St. Paul is going around to see who is dead. And as if the incense will go around, touching each one who is slumbering in sleeping or death of sin, to tell him, wake up. The liturgy is a liturgy of resurrection, is a liturgy of ascending with the Lord in his own sacrifice. And the final point is the liturgy of the early church um, really resulted in a cure of, from fear, from death. And that's why regardless of the season of the liturgy in our apostolic church, there is always joyful hymns during Eucharist, during communion. We are always rejoicing, even in the times of Lent. Once we are having communion, 
We are rejoicing because you are united with the resurrected Lord, regardless of the season of the church. And also, we hear peace be with you. And every time we have an apostolic liturgy, peace be with you, I leave with you my peace, I give to you, bless us with this also, O Lord. And basically that's the hymn that's repeated so many times in our apostolic liturgy because this is the peace of the Lord in liturgy. And many of our apostolic liturgies, if in Coptic Church, Ethiopian, Indian, Oriental, or Catholic, as long as it's an apostolic church, there, is, there are certain cornerstones that every apostolic liturgy must have, which is sanctification of the bread and wine into body and blood. In our apostolic liturgy, the body and blood we eat are not symbolic, but rather true body and true blood. We do not eat bread and wine after the sanctification of the pearls, but rather we believe, Amin, Amin, Amin. I believe, I believe, I believe. This is Emmanuel who stood before Pontius Pilate, same Lord who was crucified, was tried. He is the same Lord that now we are eating. And that's also another apostolic concept. We believe that our apostolic liturgy is run completely by our Lord Christ himself. John Chrysostom declared that the priest and the sacrifice, and maybe in another sentence, and even the altar, are the Lord Jesus Christ himself. He is the true priest, and he is the true sacrifice. He gives us himself. He offers himself as a true sacrifice. So this is the apostolic church, and these are some ideas regarding the liturgies in the first church. And until we meet with another episode, Apostolic Church, God bless.